A very good afternoon and thank you for joining us on this webinar on scientific landfill closure practices. This is a part of our webinar series aimed at capacity building and solid waste management under the CCAC or the Climate and Clean Air Initiative. The Climate and Clean Air Initiative was launched by the UNEP and aims to capitalize um, rapid reductions in short-lived climate pollutants to protect human health, agriculture and environment. We have with us today Professor Brajesh Kumar Dubey from IIT Kharagpur. He brings with him 16 years of rich research, teaching, training, and industrial outreach experience in the areas of solid and hazardous waste management. He's been teaching courses in the areas of solid and hazardous waste management for, for nearly a decade. He has also authored more than 200 publications in his area and taught in several universities in USA, Canada, New Zealand, China, and India. So we will start with a 45 minute presentation from Professor Dubey and then open for an question and answer session. You can send in your questions during the session or post the presentation using the small chat box on the right hand side of the page. Uh, with that, I'm going to enable the audio for our expert for the day and turn things over to Professor Vijesh Kumar Dubey. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, Kaushik, uh, for the introduction. So as uh, Kaushik mentioned, today we'll be talking about scientific landfill closer practices. And uh, so we'll uh, get started with that. And so just uh, some of you, I, I was looking at, uh, I was looking at the uh, like attendee list and I found some familiar faces there as well. So who has taken that online uh, course on solid waste management last, last, last semester, or just uh, this which happened uh, late last month in the existing October. So again, uh, welcome back. <laughs> so some, for those of those of people, you may have seen some of these slides already, but again, it would be a good revision. So, so what we are trying to do here is to, as we know, in, uh, in, in a developing in country contest, and as well as for the developed countries, landfill is there. Landfill is go is whether we like it or we don't like it. Landfill is uh, is being used as one of the way of I would say disposing waste in uh, in, in many countries around the world. If we just uh, like don't take into account few countries in the Western Europe. Uh, which still uses landfill, landfill, but at a very minimal level. But other than that, uh, most of the countries, including North, in North America, most of Eastern Europe, uh, some countries in Western Europe, including UK, uh, most of Asia, Africa. So we are relying on landfill for the most part in uh, managing our garbage. And when we talk about in the Indian context, we are actually working with dump sites most of all. So today what we'll talk about We'll touch upon a little bit on dump site, but we'll also uh, have, uh, just to get things started, we'll have a, just a quick overview of the waste generation and characterization since I was not uh, that much sure of what kind of audience there will be. So I thought just give you a quick, uh, like a few slides overview of how much, what kind of waste we generate and how we are managing it in the country right now. Then we'll go straight to the landfill. So we'll not talk about the other aspect uh, because the topic is on on uh, uh, closure of the landfill, what are the ways to close it. And when we do the landfill closures, uh, we have to do some landfill cap, we have to talk about the stormwater control, we have to talk about long-term management of leachate and gas, so we'll, we'll do that. And as you know, uh, if you have taken any solid waste, if you have re read about solid waste management, landfill, the day it, it stops accepting garbage, from that day, uh, that's called the landfill being closed, for taking any further garbage in. From that day, as per the regulation requirement, we have to still monitor the landfill performance over uh, usually around 30 some years. Uh, some, some regulation requires less, some regulation requires more. But say if you think about uh, one and a half uh, decade to two decades to three decades, so that requires money. So there has to be certain financial plan, financial assurance. We'll talk about a little bit on that. And then once, uh, say, when the landfill is matured, when we say matured, the le uh, leachate production has gone down, not, not much gas production coming in, waste has degraded for most part, we don't see much settlement happening, can we do something with that landfill? So what are the uses for the old landfill? And then we'll get into the concept of landfill mining and we'll end our presentation there. So to just a quick overview in terms of the waste generation and characterization in India. India is still, uh, if you look at the per capita waste generation per person per day at an average throughout India, 
have, we'd say, around 0.6 to 0.7 kg per person per day. This data is a slightly older data, uh, the published in 2015, but the data came out a few years before that. And here, we, as you can see, for most part, we are looking at around 0.5 being the average. Uh, the CTH EO manual, if you have looked at that manual, that requires you to take around 0.6 kg per person per day for some design calculation. So even if you go by the CTH manual 0.6, but that's an average value for India, especially for the urban India. But if you are in, uh, even with DJ right now, uh, Delhi is in the news for uh, air pollution problem. We'll, we may touch on that later today. But uh, if you think about just in Delhi city, uh, if you are in uh, double, like a wealthy area of the city, you may find the uh, waste generation to be much higher. So if you are in South Extension, uh, Defense Colony, Greater Kailas, or uh, uh, like a Vesant Bihar, those areas you may find per person rate to be higher compared to if you go to some of the other areas of Delhi, which is not that well off, where you see mostly low middle class or middle class families. So that's, there is a... Uh, there will be variability, but in general, we can take around 0.6 to 0.7 kg per person per day. So that's the typical waste that is being produced. That's the uh, total waste uh, that is coming in. And uh, different cities, see this, uh, this was a study again, uh, so, so this study done by municipal uh, manual, uh, manual pr 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 uh, is presenting these uh, tables. So depending on the population uh, of the different uh, uh, cities or towns we are looking at, the waste composition keeps on changing to some extent. For most part, the important stuff is the compostable material, which is compost, can be composted or can be anaerobic digested. That we see has a variability of around 30 some percent to 56 percent. So uh, as, uh, as you go into the bigger as you go into the bigger uh, uh, cities, which are a population of more than 5 million, uh, you see that the compostable matter actually goes down because we start seeing more and more packaging material is started showing up, all those plastics and uh, those which is not really compostable. And as we go to the lower, uh, uh, like the smaller towns and semi-urban areas, we start seeing more uh, uh, compostable material. And there is some, of course, some variabilities there in between. And the inert material, which uh, inert material by uh, for most part is uh, finding its place in the dump site today uh, in India and in the landfill in many parts of the world. So that's uh, it's, that's also substantial. Like nearly 40 to 50 percent of uh, the waste is going to the inert material. So that's on in terms of uh, uh, composition. And then if you look at the chemical characteristics, again, uh, again, these are, not, these are not very exhaustive survey, as you can see from the first, uh, second table, uh, sorry, uh, the second column in both the tables, you see that uh, it's uh, mostly a few cities uh, compared to the size of the India, the data is not that substantial, but it does give a good idea of uh, where we are. And uh, we do see uh, some of this carbon nitrogen ratio pretty pretty good around 25. So it could be a good uh, compostable material or even uh, anaerobic digestion could be done for some of these uh, stuff. Calorific value, although we are trying to go for a lot of waste to energy plants, even uh, the recent uh, Niti Aayog, uh, uh, the three-year plan that uh, they that they came out with, I think they call it some paper. Uh, which is there on their website, that also kind of uh, is suggesting that we should go more and more into waste energy plan. But uh, if, as you can look uh, at the calorific value, it's pretty low. Uh, typical, uh, if you don't have less than uh, anything less than 2,000, that's uh, kilo calories per kg, it's, it's, it's very difficult to have a, a stable working waste energy plan. We can achieve that if we do some source segregation. Unfortunately, we don't do that. Uh, but, uh, we have to do it as for the new MSW management rules. But we are not able to do that, so that's why we are uh, where we are in terms of uh, just a snapshot. And uh, it, this is the same thing being uh, uh, presented in a pictorial way, where uh, you can see that fruits and vegetables and food waste that's for predominantly the compostable organic matter. When we talk about recycle, the paper, plastic, glass, and metals, and most of these materials are being taken away by the uh, by the kabadi ones. So it's, they don't really show up in the dump site. The good quality ones. The ones which cannot be recycled, that will only show up in the dump site. And uh, some, of the, some of the soiled material, which is mixed with other material together, may show up. There are some toxic substances present. Uh, this, uh, uh, this particular uh, pie chart uh, is not to scale. Don't think that 25% is toxic substances. This is just to show you what are the different uh, uh, types of 
uh, like the things are present in a municipal solid waste. Then you may have some soil waste like bulk stain cotton, sanitary napkin, disposable syringes. So those things also, it's like a household hazardous, part of it is household hazardous waste. So as if you have looked into MSW management rules 2016, we, need, we should do a three-way collection. One is for the dry waste, one is the wet waste, and third one is the household hazardous waste. Some of the material from the toxic substances as well as from here should make way to household hazardous. Some of these are also so could be classified as biomedical, but we don't have a house-to-house -to -house biomedical waste collection, so we can put it in household hazardous waste. So in terms of uh, percentage-wise, if you look at uh, organic fraction, is still pretty high, 40 to 60 percent uh, is organic fraction of municipal solid waste. And here, paper, which again is organic, but this paper is something which is not very, very hard to degrade, so high lignin content, that's around 3 to 6 percent. Inlet material, 30 to 40 percent, some plastic metals, and these are actually, it looks like this is uh, the sample after uh, the the wallas. It's not the waste that is being produced at the house, but it's waste that is being disposed, which is coming out of the house, because uh, recyclable plastic papers and glass is taken away at the house level itself. So in terms of uh, collection, treatment, and disposal, there are a variety of sources from the waste comes in, it goes to household, uh, then it, uh, it is a primary collection, secondary collection, goes to transfer station, and then it goes to uh, dumping sites for most part in Indian context, some composting is being done. Then uh, in terms of recycling, we have household and uh, buyers are there, then rack pickers uh, from primary collection, there are recycling dealers, then rack picking happening in the transfer station, even at the dump sites. Uh, if you go to Bhalaswat uh, or uh, Gajipur landfills in Delhi or any big city landfill you go to, you find several people trying to take out some of these recyclable materials from there and they try to make a living off of that. So people are uh, doing the dump site picking as well. And they do help in terms of recycling, but again, uh, the, uh, the quality in terms of the environmental health and safety, as well as uh, the processes that they use may not be much so good. So if you look at in terms of what is happening in terms of the management practice, uh, some biochemical conversion, some anaerobic digestion happening, but very less. Composting is more uh, happening in the country. We are trying to build some incineration plants. There are few already running in the country, but majority, nearly 90% of the waste given today is going to the landfill, which is a mostly dump site. So, uh, so we start focusing as in that same thing shows up in two Two studies done uh, where this was uh, the, in landfilling is nearly nine, more than 90% and around 67% was composting. And this is uh, Ranjit Tenopu's uh, paper uh, out of 2012. CPCB, uh, they did work in, for the Kerala. Again, you see uh, landfilling is kind of a major uh, way of uh, disposal of garbage. So landfill, uh, why it is still being used that much? It's a least cost option. Uh, if you don't require a skill manpower. You, some, some places you can use it to convert the marshy land to the useful area, uh, but there is a danger of con contaminating the groundwater, contaminating the subsurface. Natural, and uh, natural resources are returning back to the soil and uh, they could be recycled, but uh, that's what people make an argument, but I don't know how much that is true. Uh, gas produced can be used, can be used uh, as, a, as an energy source, can be used for power generation, but there is a lot of problems with the landfill as well in terms of the surface runoff during rainfall uh, that causes pollution. Even uh, when the landfill is working, landfill is active, we do have uh, the problem of surface runoff. And the same thing when the landfill is closed, we have to make we have to make sure that the surface runoff doesn't get inside the landfill because that will be actually converting all those runoff to leachate. Then so soil and groundwater may get polluted uh, by the leachate as well. Uh, and uh, because of landfill is a huge area, even a very good landfill site, you have a gas collection efficiency of something around 55 to 60 percent. If you find some uh, landfill which has around 60 to 65 percent gas collection uh, efficiency, that's considered a very good gas collection system. So think about 65 percent, even at the best. So another 35 percent of those are fugitive emissions. They are just getting into the atmosphere and causing those greenhouse gases and climate change and all that. So that's uh, that, that's why we need to have a good gas collection system as part of the landfill closure and to monitor the gas collection system as well. A lot of areas required, and, uh, there is, and then you have to bring all the garbage to this location, so there is a significant carbon cost, transportation cost. Then if you, there is a, a buildup of uh, methane, it may catch fire. It will, uh, it will probably not explode, but it will essentially catch fire. 
it may explode if it goes into the flammability range, but that would be very rare. But uh, it does catch fire from time to time. That that happens uh, even uh, just last year. Uh, the landfill in Mumbai was on fire for several days. Sometimes uh, in uh, these dump sites, uh, we also put things on top. So we just put the fire on purpose. When I say uh, we, that like the people working there, the municipal uh, the, who wants to uh, just to put more garbage on top. So it's because the landfill uh, is filling up. They need to make uh, some space. Uh, on the middle of the night, somebody puts a torch here and it burns for, and then makes some mistakes there, which is not, which is not allowed, but it does happen. So in terms of the, since the landfill is the focus of this uh, webinar, so landfill closure. So let's uh, look at uh, what is the landfill. Some of, uh, I assume that you may have some idea, but I thought uh, let's give you a quick uh, layout of what a landfill is all about. So we have, uh, so as you can see, this is the, the, the black thing is your liner system. It's, uh, that's your liner. And you can think of this uh, landfill as a huge polythene bag where the garbage is in the middle here in the green portion. So that's where our garbage is. So, and we'll be talking more into the final cover today and the leachate collection and the gas collection. So, but then uh, you have this uh, leachate collection system at the bottom because leachate will be produced, there will be rainwater coming in. And while the landfill uh, is accepting garbage, the rainwater will get into the landfill. So we can, uh, the leachate will be produced, which will be collected through these pipes. When the garbage has some uh, moisture content, so there will be uh, leachate production through that as well, because contribution coming from there. And when the waste degrades, if you if you looked at the waste degradation formula, it also produces uh, uh, leachate. So that that is also there. So we have uh, uh, leachate produced as a part of the waste degradation. So so that's a that's a byproduct. So that is also is used on there. So in terms of, uh, uh, we have, uh, it's a, it's, it's in terms of uh, the landfill, we need to have a gas collection system, we need to have a leachate collection system. So that's the that's the leachate collection system right there, the gas collection system. It's just an example is shown that we can have a pipe, perforated pipe, and then we can apply some vacuum and collect the gas. We have to make sure that liner system is intact, so you use the clay at the bottom. Uh, surface water collection ditch has to be there, so the surface water is uh, taken care of, and we'll we'll spend some more time on that. So this is what typically what a landfill looks like. So where the landfill is collected, I will not spend too much time uh, on this uh, aspect. Uh, some of these slides were uh, sent to you up front, so you may want to use it as a reference later on. But uh, sanitary landfill and uh, it's, it's basically, it, it, we have to design it for a period of around 20 to 25 years. So, and then we do it in, a, in what is known as landfill sales. Sales means uh, you don't, uh, say if you had 10 acres of area to build a landfill, you don't build landfill of the 10 acres on day one. You go make for maybe a couple of acres, two to three acres. That's called cell, that could be your cell one, then you go to cell two, then you go to cell three. So that's where you are in, uh, in a phased manner so that uh, you can uh, use it, uh, the space more wisely. So, and uh, as part of the design and, uh, and the plan, you need to have a detailed design, proper documentation, closure plan, and we'll talk about the closure plan. And uh, so the, it's, it's part of the town planning. So in uh, site selection, there has to be some buffer zone, no development there, Temp there has to be some temporary storage facilities. So all these things are there in solid waste management rules and also in municipal solid waste uh, manual, uh, which is uh, developed, uh, it's a, you can download that if you go on such a Bharat mission, uh, that particular urban uh, website, or even just type a CPHEO manual for uh, municipal solid waste management in India, and you will find that uh, uh, manual PDF and you can download that. Uh, it's a several hundred pages uh, document, but it's a, it's a nice uh, document with some way. So, and there are some other, these are also available there. The landfill should be 100 meters away from river, 200 meters away from pond and all that. So this is the, what the landfill is all about. So let's focus on the final cover, which is the focus here. So modern landfills, they, they, they are complex engineers. So they are not uh, uh, like a dump sites where you have a hole, you start putting garbage in them, and then you put some uh, dirt on top. That's not how modern landfills are managed. Modern landfills will need to have a uh, leachate collection system. Also, you see the groundwater at the bottom. The groundwater monitoring wells has to be there. Gas monitoring probe has to be there. Rainwater retention pond has to be there. So whatever is the rainwater uh, through the slope can go and go in uh, this particular area. So here again, the groundwater monitoring. 
So there has to be a leach collection system. There has to be a gas collection system, which you see over there. The storm control bomb is there. So it's, uh, and then you have a, a very good uh, uh, cover design uh, for this landfill. So in terms of the landfill closure, when we say the landfill has accept, it stops accepting waste, it, 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 can be, it needs to be closed. And when we say it needs to be closed, there is a certain regulation for that. And regulation requires us to put an engineered cap on that. So when we say engineered cap, uh, the, the goal of the engineered cap is to keep the rainwater out and gas in. Because, uh, see, right now what our focus is, uh, why, why this landfill? And uh, say again, uh, how this landfill became important uh, as part of the waste management system. Since, uh, in, say, I would say uh, mid seven, late, eight, mid, late, late 70s, early 80s, uh, we were wrestling with uh, the environmental uh, uh, professionals uh, in the Western world were wrestling with how to keep, how to manage this garbage so that to minimize the environmental and human health impact. Since the technology was not as advanced as what it is today, there were not so many things which can be recycled today. For example, food waste to energy was not what not even envisioned during that particular time. So people thought that okay, if we come up with this landfill, which will have a liner at the bottom, a cap on the top, and it will produce leachate. So I will collect the leachate. I don't want to have the leachate being built up because that will create a problem in, in terms of the hydraulic stability of the landfill. There will be pressure. Uh, like a uh, uh, pressure buildup that can lead to landslide, uh, low water pressure will uh, to C and phi value. Uh, the, the geotechnical properties of the waste will get compromised, and we may have a landslide, as what has happened uh, during this, this particular rainy season. We had an incident in uh, uh, in uh, Delhi itself, uh, uh, like Gajipur landfill, which uh, had a uh, landslide, and Ahmedabad it happened as well uh, during uh, the big rainy rainy week event uh, that happened there uh, during the rain, during the monsoon time. So those things do happen. But then to 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 do to have say if you don't have a leachate collection system, that will happen more frequently because the water will build up, and then water will make uh, it will basically make the things fluid, and things will uh, slide down. Uh, because the C and phi values from your geotechnical class, uh, as you know, will get compromised. So to to keep them, so we have to have a leachate collection system. We need to, and when the waste degrades, it produces gas. If you just leave it outside, the gas creates problem. We started realizing that the methane gas is a problem in terms of the greenhouse gas. It's, a, it's uh, leading to the climate change, global warming, and whatever you, you want to call that. So, we said, okay, if we can put a control, so if we have this uh, uh, top cover and the side cover and the side, side liner and the top cover, so we can control, we can collect the gas, we can collect the leachate, and we'll prevent the environmental harm. And at the same time, uh, we, can mo we can monitor. So we will have this groundwater monitoring system. We'll have this storm water monitoring system. We'll have a, whether the landfill gas is migrating below the surface. So all those things systems can be put in place. So if you think about the landfill, it's a, it's a unique kind of a structure. Uh, even some, uh, in some of the presentations I've heard, some people calling it a civil engineering model. It's one of the uh, marvel of civil engineering design. Now, although uh, people may say that landfill is more like a band-aid solution. But since no other option is available, so, so for example, what is happening in India today, uh, mostly dump sites, no control, and having uh, having uh, impact on all sorts of things, on air, water, soil. So, so rather than having an engineered land, I would rather have an engineered landfill than those dump sites. So it's, it's at least a step further. And since the economics works for landfill, that's why it gets popular as well. So. So when the landfill is working, we have to, since the post-closer care period, uh, 30 years uh, is what is required for the most of the Western uh, the regulation. Uh, some places even 15 years, so what I saw was 15 years has been allowed, uh, that you can use it for 15, uh, you can do the post-closer care period for 15 years, especially if you have mostly inerts going to the landfill. So even in the MLW management rules, it says that uh, if it's, uh, if we, since we do the wet and dry separation and everything needs to be treated first, if only the inerts can go to the landfill. So if, if only inerts go to the landfill, we can have this post-closure period for 15 years. But again, I don't think the post-closure care period will end just uh, when, when uh, 15 years is over. Say, for example, if a landfill, engineered landfill, uh, it stops collecting garbage on 31st December 2020, it's not that on 31st December 2035 it will stop uh, doing the post as a period because uh, 
if it is still produces leakage, if you still see some of the gas being produced, you will have to continue monitor that. So you have to look at uh, the leakage quality, gas, and all those stuff. Uh, then before you finally say, yes, we, I don't want to do this post closure uh, care uh, any further. And then you can use that site for some redevelopment. So, so during the period the landfill is in operational, we have to accrue some money so that the money can be used for closer and post closure. Because it, it requires a lot of, if, if you have to manage, if you have to even uh, keep an eye on that landfill for 20 years and do the groundwater sampling, do the leakage sampling, look at the gas. So it, it costs money. You have to get a consulting company or whatever. So it, uh, so you have to have enough money. So that money will come from the tipping fee, the fee fee that a landfill will charge uh, to uh, the waste uh, generators. Uh, so the waste, whoever is bringing the waste to the landfill, there is a money associated with that. For example, something around 1,500 rupees per ton or 1,400 rupees per ton. That also depends from place to place how much is the cost associated with that. So as per Solid Waste Management Rule 2016, there is a requirement for closures are outlined. You need to have a final cover design. You need to have closure plan. You need to have post-closure plan. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, it says that once you have... Uh, uh, the, when the landfill reaches full capacity, you're not uh, accepting additional waste. You can, uh, it should be closed and you can reduce, you can reduce the waste of bio mining if you don't see any further uh, gas being produced, no more settlement. So you have to major settlement for like every six months or every year. And then you look at the leaching quality, gas quality, and if you don't see any of those, uh, you, you kind of convince that the waste is already degraded. So you can go for bio mining, you can go for uh, processing of the waste, and you can find the place to, uh, for uh, placement of the CGO in the new landfill, or you can do the capping. Capping is uh, basically you put an enhanced geo membrane, and uh, you can, uh, if you need it, you can uh, collect and flare the gas. So it's an additional measure. So you can put some extraction wells for pumping and other stuff. There could be any other method uh, suitable as well, which you can make. So in, in, in a summary, uh, uh, landfill closure, the goal is to minimize maintenance. So we want to make a closure in such a way so that uh, the maintenance is easy. Control erosion. We don't want things to be the waste getting eroded out or the cover soil getting eroded out. We have to control and manage leakage, control and manage landfill gas, manage the settlement. We don't want one area of the landfill. That's what we do during the landfill operation as well. We try to spread the garbage, different types of garbage in different parts of the landfill so that we don't have a huge settlement in one area of the landfill and not much in the other area because that will lead to some of the liner uh, stability problems. And then, of course, we have to mount and monitor the technical standard. So this is a typical uh, landfill cap. This is how it looks like. Uh, you will have a solid waste at the bottom. Then this is your gas collection pipe. You have some gas venting layer in between. Then you put a low permeable soil because you don't want the gas to escape through. You want the gas to pass through these pipes. And then uh, you put some barrier layer, uh, which is uh, just to keep things safe uh, from uh, uh, some activities on the top of the landfill, because when you have all these uh, vegetative layers or you do different uh, kind of activities on top, you have lots of vehicles coming on top of the landfill. So you put a barrier layer, which actually pushing to all these systems below here to keep them safe. And, uh, and then gas collector can go for gas recovery system and all that. So you have a barrier soil layer around 60 centimeter, you have a drainage layer of 15 centimeter, and then on top of that, you put a vegetative layer. So you put some trees on top of the landfill, and that keeps the soil intact. That also helps in keeping the erosion low. So that's, um, and that's how a typical landfill. So if you go to a typical landfill, kind of from a distance, it just looks like any, uh, uh, you may get confused with the golf course as well because uh, with it, all that slopes and other things that is there. It's, uh, if it's done properly, you don't, you should not smell that much on top of the landfill as well. If you're smelling gas, that means there is some problem with the gas recovery system. So another uh, picture of the same thing, you have the waste and gas venting, low permeable soil, then you do have a geo membrane here and the drainage layer. Then you have a biotic barrier layer, so you put some wood chips and other stuff, you put a filter. So even if some gas does escape, it kind of gets, uh, uh, it gets treated before it goes to the top layer. So on top, you have the vegetation and soil top layer, and you put some uh, vegetation on top. So this is how the landfill flow caps look like. When I say cap, it is on the top of the landfill and also on the side slopes. So this will be on the top as well as on the side slopes, that is how the caps look like. So in the final cover system, we try to have, uh, we put a buffer to the waste, as you saw, several layers on top of the waste. 
to make sure that the gas is collected properly and that there is a barrier, there is some natural and artificial barrier, uh, drainage, cover soil, topsoil, vegetation, all those things are part of that. And so once you have this, uh, there are other systems which need to support uh, this gap system and those are for, we have to make sure that uh, uh, the storm water after the rain event, the storm water does not make a huge ponding on top of the landfill because that rain will be a problem. So there has to be a proper storm water control with proper slope. So that's uh, storm water offering on landfill property or from the adjacent. They should be prevented from uh, getting into the waste because if it gets into the waste, uh, although it should not because they have the top liner on the uh, top tower, top tower with the NTP geo membrane. So it should not get in, but just in case, so if you did not uh, have this, uh, because what happens is you have the top liner and you have the side liner and they need to meet at the anchor trench. And sometimes when uh, they, the, the meeting point does not happen very properly, very nicely because of uh, the pool is constructed at a way different period of time. So there, there, there's, uh, there may be areas where that there is a chance of the strong water getting into the landfill. So we have to prevent that. So we should not be let, be let them get into the landfill because that will create a problem in terms of the landfill stability as well as for the leachate uh, uh, collection system because there will be a lot of leachate being produced. So that uh, we have seen in some landfill that is being happening. So a storm water system shall be operated uh, that has to meet the requirement. So for example, this is one example here, the storm water control. So we have storm water channels. Uh, so as soon as the, we have to provide basically a nice slope and a nice drain, uh, that's what the, it's all about. So in a simple way, you have to have nice slope. So any water coming on top of the landfill, they are on the side side slopes of the landfill. They should uh, we should take them away from the landfill as as quickly as possible, and then put them into these strong water channels so that they are taken away uh, from the landfill surface, and so that uh, it doesn't pop on on top of the landfill. So you see, the system is designed uh, to route the storm water uh, away from the cover system. So it uh, flows uh, nicely away and with a nice slope. So, and then this needs to be maintained. We cannot let uh, all the grass grow up here, or a lot of dirt coming in and the slope gets messed up. So those uh, need to, uh, uh, and that has to be done over the period of time for post closure care. So all, again, that's why uh, money is important. So there is a, it's a long-term management, routine maintenance for as long as 30 years. Uh, it, sometimes it may even go longer. Uh, it's especially if you are taking municipal solid waste, which has organic matter is still there. If you have just the inert material, some landfills uh, may be allowed to close before 20 years, 30 years. But again, it depends on, you have to look at the leachate quality and the gas quality, then only you will make the final decision. So you have to maintain the final cover. If you have to collect leachate, you cannot just, uh, collecting leachate means you have to treat it as well. You cannot uh, uh, just uh, dump it anywhere. So leachate needs to be treated. Groundwater needs to be monitored, the, especially in, uh, when you look at the landfill site, uh, on both sides, on the upstream as well as the downstream, you need to install some groundwater monitoring well to make sure that the lead liner is not leaking and uh, not you know, things are not getting into our groundwater. And uh, so those uh, things have to be looked into. Then gas migration. Is the gas making into the groundwater? Because uh, that is also a problematic. So if the gas goes to subsurface, gas so we have methane and CO2. So that means additional carbon load. Additional carbon load means uh, for the it, it it has the it has the potential to alter the biogeochemistry of the subsurface. So when it alters the biogeochemistry of the subsurface, it, that will lead to uh, the pollution not only from uh, the landfill uh, cause of the landfill, but also because of say if, if for example if arsenic is present for that matter or uh, in in the subsurface soil. And as we know, our iron is a very good absorption site for arsenic. Now, if we create a reducing condition, uh, and then we have this uh, carbon supply uh, in terms of the landfill gas, or if the lander is uh, breaking and the leachate is also coming in, now this carbon supply will require carbon needs to be oxidized. For that, we need a reducing agent. So for the reducing agent, the first uh, preference is given to oxygen, but when the oxygen is used up, because you have put a liner system on top now, so there is a no exchange of oxygen happening, there is a impervious layer on top. So you may, after oxygen, you will have nitrate. If you remember from uh, that uh, biogeochemistry, any, if you have read about that, after oxygen, the next preferred electron acceptor is nitrate. Then you have iron and manganese. Now if iron acts in the electron acceptor, what will happen? Iron will get reduced. So reduced iron means, dissolved iron. 
iron-3, which is a typical form of iron in the, in the environment, it's, it's a stable form, it's a solid form. But when it goes to iron-2, it can dissolve. Now, iron got dissolved, so what happened to arsenic? Arsenic lost its home, because arsenic was on iron surface. Now, iron got dissolved, so arsenic will come into the groundwater. So, although arsenic is not coming from, arsenic is there in the soil, as uh, we see in many parts in India, or Bangladesh, and a and, uh, lot of countries around Around the world, we have this arsenic problem. Arsenic is there in the subsurface. It's a, it's a naturally occurring arsenic. We are not supplying arsenic to that. It's not the leakage which is supplying the arsenic. It's just because that biogeochemistry of the subsurface got uh, 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 altered, that is leading to, because arsenic lost its form. Its form was iron, surface, iron oxide surface. That was the absorption site. Now arsenic will get into the ground. Next time the rain, it's a rainwater, rainwater percolates through that area uh, because of the, the ruby, of course, seepage and the, and the uh, groundwater table will go high. And then at that time, you will see arsenic getting into the groundwater and coming into the tube wells and all that. So that's, uh, that's not the cause of arsenic in Bangladesh, but, the, but similar things happen in Bangladesh too, not, not because of landfill, but some other activities. If you are interested, we can talk about that later. But, uh, so, but those are very, very important. That's why we need to do this long-term management. The leakage has to be uh, co collected. The leakage collection system needs to be maintained properly. There is always a choice of leakage collection system getting clogged, especially because of uh, sulfur-based uh, compounds. So that needs to be looked at very carefully. Leakage needs to be transported. Uh, it has to be treated. So uh, these days, even uh, you can have uh, 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 we have robots which can go into this leakage collection system pipes and help us uh, do those cleanup. So if you go on YouTube, you may find some of those uh, robot videos. Then gas has to be collected and maintained uh, on site, uh, inspect the collection system, condensate removed, condensate is the, uh, when the gas comes out, the gas since the landfill is slightly warmer than the, in the, in the ambient, so we have, uh, con when the gas comes out, it cools down, so we have some moisture that needs to be removed. Then if it's being flared, the flare has to be maintained, or uh, recovery system, record keeping has to be done. Landfill gas blower flare system, it, it, that requires regular maintenance, especially if you have sulfur based and other gases, that is uh, nasty for these equipments. So they require regular maintenance. You have to keep up, uh, you have to have a good upkeep. That's your flare station right there. And this is uh, the blower that uh, all the vacuum and other things being controlled from here. So, and it's of course has to be in a lock uh, environment so that uh, it doesn't get into some uh, bad people's hand. So for all that requires money. So we need to have, uh, uh, we need to estimate the cost to find out the money that would be required. We have to establish the fund for that. It could, could be at the form of trust fund, could be letter of credit, could be bond, some insurance, financial test, guarantees, combination of mechanisms. So somehow we need to have money to do this for 30 some years. So you can do it, uh, some of the example requirement, you do the cost estimate, you do also adjustment because of uh, uh, there will be always uh, uh, inflation and uh, so you need to have those three adjustments as well because you're looking at 25, 30 years uh, time period, landfill management, uh, you need to have proof of financial assurance, cost estimate, adjustment of that. So those those things need to be done. Again, uh, you need to come up with uh, different costs for leakage pumping, transportation, groundwater monitoring system, any other cost with compliance or rules. There may be some changes in rule later on, which may, you may have to still apply to, so you keep some uh, buffer there. Uh, so those need to be done. The cost needs to be estimated and certified by professional engineers or the third party. Uh, that needs to be done as well. And then for maintenance, uh, you need to take care of surface, record, we need to keep the record, do the monitoring. So usually these things are what, what happens is, uh, this is also done in many places as a part of PPP. So the, the, the municipality will hire a uh, consulting firm and then the consulting firm will do all the stuff and they give the report to the municipality who will turn will submit it to SPCB and then to CPCB. So, but they will, do it and then initially it needs to be done every three months, then six months, then once a year, depending on if you have any, if you have no problem. If you have problem, then the frequency can change it. So, but then you have to do things for all these stuff. So in terms of the cost closure, you have to monitor the leachate, monitor groundwater, we talked about that, and uh, monitor the landfill gas. And uh, say again, some examples, the road, for example, the road needs to be maintained so that it's accessible. Uh, drainage system needs to be maintained. You don't want this kind of stuff happening to the drainage system. Uh, the excite access uh, must be controlled. Uh, we should have a closed gate system. Access needs to be controlled. 
and these things should not build up. So although it looks everything was working, but as if you hope uh, you saw that uh, actually uh, the door is uh, the lock is broken, and you see all these things being built up in there. So those uh, those things are not uh, acceptable. And so so after if you watch it for several years, what should you do? Should you watch forever? Uh, should we convert it to golf course and park? You can mine. All this, like uh, both bullet two and three is being used, uh, is being done. We, we have saw this landfill has been converted to golf courses, some of has been converted to parks, and even the landfill mining is happening. Landfill mining is happening. Some places even they are doing a ski slope, a ball, ball field, amphitheater, playground. For example, this Indraprastha Park is uh, was an old dump site. So those things are there. So once you have the landfill being closed and the waste has degraded for a period of time, uh, you don't see much landfill gas being produced, you don't see much uh, settlement, and you have to make sure uh, that the, you have to look at the health and environment. You, you want you can build some structures on top. You don't want to build too more too big because it's still you have the, the landfill. Uh, if you put too much pressure on top, it it may have settled down because it's not the soil; it's the garbage in there. So if uh, there is a chance of that, so you need to actually look at what is the geotechnical property of the uh, of the landfill, uh, like a decent decomposed garbage. So that leads to uh, the landfill mining, which is a process uh, where we can use, uh, uh, we can excavate it. Once the garbage is already stabilized, no more further degradation of garbage. So it's mostly inert material. We can excavate it. Potentially, can use it for land, can use it for a construction material, or can be used as a cover cover soil for the other landfill. Uh, most of the landfill mining that is happening to uh, that has happened is uh, happened on an old dump site where the old dump sites were mined. Uh, some of the materials were recovered because uh, again some of the recyclables, which is recyclable, which can be recycled today, could not have been recycled earlier. And we can recover this ferrous and non-ferrous metals much better today than what it was say 20 to 30 or 30 years ago. So the technology has improved. So we are trying to uh, use that. Uh, so it does help in conservation of landfill space, reduction in the landfill footprint, and you eliminate potential contamination source because the liner, even if it's a line landfill, liner after a certain piece, certain decay, it will have a tendency to break. So if you take the waste out, many times what they do is they put a new, since finding a new site for the landfill is very difficult, so they are trying to, what we try to do is we use the same um, uh, uh, like a landfill uh, space, but we put a new liner system on it and then uh, go back and put the new garbage and use the garbage uh, which came out of the old landfill as a daily cover material if you need it. So then you can rehabilitate, energy recovery can be done from the recovered waste as well if it's a good calorific value. So essentially, and then a lot of uh, uh, project is being happening around the world as you can see, and even in India, uh, things uh, are being working. The uh, US kind of leads the pack over there with 19 projects uh, happening over there in a recent uh, decade. So in terms of, you have to look at the composition of the waste, what is the market value? Again, everything economics has to work. So what is the efficiency of the proposed resource recovery process, quality, likely environmental impact, uh, logistics, where to do the processing, if, uh, what will happen during the range event, uh, say if you have, uh, after the end event, you have things may become kind of leachate, how you do that, how you manage the noise, dust, order traffic, what is the community's expectation, so all those things need to be there. There are some examples, like in Berry, Canada, they do that uh, waste excavation, screening, and recompaction, and they mine the landfill, they mine a the fine line cell and place a new line cell. That's what I was saying. For Dero landfill, again, do the same thing, they put a land uh, cell there. They reuse the landfill air space. They upgraded the landfill with a newer regulation. And uh, they also did uh, waste to energy because uh, there was, uh, after doing some uh, uh, segregation of the garbage, after removing those soil kind of material with other material, they could use other material as a good color of value source uh, for uh, waste to energy. And the Taiwan uh, is the la largest planned landfill mining program. It's uh, APA is planning to, APA of Taiwan is planning to 404 landfills and use it for energy production. So that's what is going on. In Belgium, they are trying to do that too. Georgetown and Grand Cayman is planning to do something as well. So there is a lot of planned overseas project is there. In India also, people are talking about landfill mining and uh, we see some of, the, uh, uh, some of the tenders are coming up for landfill mining as well. So in terms of uh, existing environmental issues, we have the informal recycling resource recovery and the scavenging offers at landfill site. Uh, it's unsuitable for existing location in some countries uh, because uh, the landfill mining uh, can recover valuable materials uh, from the landfill, address landfill safety, you have to make sure. 
So these are some of the stuff. Uh, say we are doing regular mining. We can make uh, we can get some of the recoverables from landfill, and then we can bring it back to our uh, uh, economic uh, cycle. So that helps. Uh, that can be used to landfill containing urban solid waste stocks. So another example where landfill containing industrial fossil residuals, we can use that. We have a primary load. This could be a secondary load that can come back uh, to the economics and can be used as uh, as a source of uh, the secondary material. And uh, this is uh, like a, you have existing landfill sites. Uh, this is in the around 150,000 to 500,000 landfills in the European Union. Uh, you can do the different options they were looking at. If they do, do nothing, or they could do some classic remediation with re-landfill. If they have to make sense to the landfill, European Union, as you know, has been going very big on waste to energy. So they are looking at if they can take this material, produce RDF, and go for waste to energy. And then, if needed, uh, part of it could be used for sanitary landfill as well. And then, looking at the use of raw bottom ash, fly ash, cement, and all that. So those uh, they can do some uh, advanced mechanical processing as well. Scenarios like new mine. Devonard landfill, which was dumped, uh, then the mining was done in 1989. Uh, so there was uh, first, uh, one of the first uh, landfill mining in India, at, at least. Uh, so in terms of summary, it can be used to recreate landfill in space. Uh, rigorous cost-benefit analysis is needed. Uh, we have to do some on-site trials to prove that landfill mining is economically viable. Uh, we have to look at the logistic and environmental management. There is a huge potential, uh, especially in the developing countries. Especially, uh, say, for example, uh, we are working with Guwahati right now. Guwahati has a landfill site, for, and although NGT wants them to get another landfill site, it's very difficult to find a new landfill site. So if, if uh, we can, uh, the existing landfill is simply a dump site. So if we can convert that dump site into a good engineered landfill facility, and uh, so that uh, will uh, at least reduce the concern that the NGT and other uh, and then we are, and the other people like us have in terms of uh, that uh, creating some problem for the environment. So it, it and if uh, the calorific value is good there, that you can be uh, future energy demand can also come from there, especially plastics. Uh, if uh, plastic can be mined and uh, used as a waste energy. So that's kind of pretty much uh, bring it to the close uh, of this webinar. Uh, well, uh, thank you, Dr. Dubey, for this interaction and to all the participants for tuning in. Please do join us for our next webinar on 17th November on ambient monitoring of methane and management of landfill fires and odor control. Thank you, Professor Dubey. Thank you all. Thank you.